Have you been scrolling through many, many, many film podcasts thinking there's far too many of these? Or have you been thinking there's something missing? There's something we're not quite getting. A waffler from Northern England reviewing films, for example. Welcome to oh, Review It Yourself. No politics, no pandering, no point. W O R K Work. Today we're going to talk about what our parents do for work. My mommy is a doctor. My dad's a truck driver. My mom's a teacher. And your dad? My dad? He's a liar. A liar? Oh, I'm sure you don't mean he's a liar. Well, he wears a suit and goes to court and talks to the judge. Oh, I see. You mean he's a lawyer. Apologies for the slight sound issues on that opening part. I've recorded that bit twice now, and there's only so many times I can put my voice that high before I lose it. Anyway, welcome to oh, Review It Yourself. Now, you might have realised from the opening that today's film is Liar Liar, which is one of Jim Carrey's best films. I might as well throw that out early. I'll, I'll say it's his best comedic film. It starts, as you've, as you've heard, with um, Max, the little kid, little five-year-old at uh, kindergarten or whatever they call it over there, uh, at nursery, and he's our reception, and he's getting asked um, about about his dad, and he calls him a liar, but uh, and he means liar, but actually he's he's pretty much telling the truth. And we see uh, Jim Carrey playing Fletcher Reed, he comes out of the courthouse, and a guy who apparently is Chris Darden, the prosecutor in the O.J. Simpson case, which I've never, I've never noticed before, and I read, uh, I read that on the trivia uh, on IMDb, so I was quite, quite impressed with that one. And he says, "How did it go in there?" And he says, "Just another victory for the wrong accused." And he's like, "Yeah, right." And he's rushing to go see his son, and then the reporter's like, "Oh, there's some reporters want to talk to you about your big win today." And he's like, "I'm very sorry, I'm, I'm really late. I've, I've got to go home and see my son." And he's. She's like, oh, the, the reporters are over here, and he's like, oh, really? How's my hair? And she's like, fantastic, you look great. And then you see him turn up really late to the house, and they're still on the step waiting for him because it's nice weather in Los Angeles, I guess. And he he does he's got a great relationship with his son, but only when he's there, and he lets him down a lot. He's divorced from his wife, and he jokes about with his son playing this game with the claw. And where he chases him with this claw arm, it's quite, it's quite funny. And the he talks about oh, I had the car ran out of gas and or petrol, and I broke down in a rough neighbourhood. And she says to him, "Well, they would never hurt you, Fletcher. You're their lawyer." And he's like, "Oh, that was blood the belt. Try to keep the gloves up." And he's taking his kid to go see wrestling. Then Carrie uh, Elwes turns up as Jerry, Audrey's boyfriend. He plays catch with Max. And we find out through the way they talk to each other. It's they're quite, it's quite platonic. They're quite happy with, with uh, the way things are. There's there's not a lot of animosity there. There's more joking really, and you you guess any kind of he had affairs, and they're talking about Jerry. He's moving to Boston because he's the administrator for a hospital, and she says, "Oh, Max will miss him," and Fletcher's like, "Well, I'll be there," and she just looks at him and walks away, and. He goes to his office. Um, he has to just pick someone up quickly, and he's just a pro BSer completely. He lies to a homeless guy. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm out. I'm out of change. Um, then we see Miranda talking to another lawyer, saying, "You know, it's your job to present the strongest case possible. Uh, you get the judge gets paid to, to decide what's true. You just you, you get paid to win." And he's like, "I'll I'll represent Mrs. Cole aggressively and ethically, but Miranda, I won't mind." Then we see Fletcher. Uh, Miranda says, we'll just have to find someone who will, which is going to be Fletcher. And Fletcher walks into his office and he sees uh, the receptionist. And she's like, hi, Mr. Reed. And she's got, I was going to say braids, but they're not braids. They're like sticky up braided hair pieces. And he's like, whoa, did you do something to your hair? And she's like, it's a bit extreme, isn't it? Um, 
my ha- hairstyle, he said it would accent my facial features. And he's like, that that's exactly what it does. It completely accents your facial features. And he's like, we've got to go to the office. And he coughs to stop himself from laughing. And then there's loads of people who, who talk to him. You know, he sees Pete, this overweight guy. And he says, hey, Pete, you're losing a little weight. He sees the guy and he's like, hey, man. And the guy's like, it's Randy. He's like, oh, I know. And then he sees a, a guy who's like, just taking lunch orders, Mr. Reed, anything. And this guy's got like a massive spot in the end of his nose. And he's like, no, I've had just about enough for breakfast. I'm almost ready to pop. I mean, I'm full. And Fletcher Reed, uh, Jim Carrey is fantastically expressive in this film. He's a clever liar. He's not nasty. He just, he's just good at, you know, smoothing people over and, and evading people. He, he's a pathological liar, but that's made him a very successful defense lawyer in this firm. He's not partnered yet, but he, he's working that way. Uh, Mrs. Selner from Mrs. Doubtfire, um, Anne Haney, or Annie Haney, um, the late great, she uh, plays his secretary, Greta, in this film. He's forgotten his son's birthday that's tomorrow, and she, she's she got him a present for the kid. And Miranda comes to see Fletcher and says, oh, you're not busy tonight, are you? And he carts the files into his office and Max realises, you know, he says to his dad, we're not going, are we? We see Audrey out at like a posh restaurant with Jerry. She, um, He asks her to marry him. And she's like, but you're moving? And he's like, I know, but it makes too much sense. We're all together. And he say, and in the morning, he drops, uh, Fletcher drops the, the son off. And they say, oh, we'll talk tonight. And he, he says to her, what do you mean tonight? And she says, to Max's birthday party. He says, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, we'll meet then, fine. And he says, bye, son. Jerry, enjoy my wife. There's some great lines in this film. We see him then give this plan to Samantha Cole. And it's really, really smart, but it's completely untrue. We find out this woman, she's married a very successful man, a millionaire by all accounts. And he says, you know, you've given him two wonderful children. And she's like, oh, one for sure. That's actually his. And he says, single, you know, one single act of indiscretion, and she's like, seven, pardon me, seven single acts of indiscretion. And he's like, you're the victim of a cold, distant workaholic, starved for affection, driven at the arms of another man, seven, yeah, whatever. And he goes on this big rant about, you know, where would Tina Turner be right now if she'd rolled over and said, hit me again, Ike, and put some stank on it, rolling on the river, that's where she'd be. But she's beyond Thunderdome, because she decided to send a message Wake up, sisters. There's no such thing as a weaker sex. And she's like really fired up by this whilst Miranda's like laughing quietly. And she says, you're right, Mr. Reed. I'm tired of getting kicked around. And then she grabs his backside when she before she walks out. Miranda's really impressed. And he misses his son's birthday party to sleep with her. And there's more than a hint. In fact, I think he says it later on when he can't lie, that it's just to help advance his career. And she bites his lip and drags him off camera. And that apparently that was Jim Carrey's idea. But it, well, it looked painful. So it's Max's birthday party. He won't cut the cake without his dad there. Fletcher is at work getting ridden by the boss, literally ridden by the boss. He rings up to say, look, I, I'm so sorry. I'm stuck at work. I can't make it. The boss is uh, really riding me. And there's a, there's a pretty funny bit where she bites his nipple and he's like, hey. And Audrey's like, what's the matter? He's, Nothing. I stubbed my toe on the desk. And she goes up to Max and says, look, your dad's sorry. He had to work. And you hear Max um, in his head say, I, I make a wish that for only one day, dad couldn't tell a lie. And it, this is at 8.15 at night and it comes true. You see Miranda and Fletcher in bed and she, well, not in bed, uh, on her office couch or something anyway. And she says, you know, was it good for you? And he's like, I've had better. And he's like, his face, he's stunned by his own admission. Then we see him in the morning and he's still laughing about it, brushing his teeth. I've had better. And then he's in a lift going down, um, like out of his apartment. And there's a woman in there, a very beautiful woman. And he says, oh, hi, have you just moved into the building? She's like, yeah, everybody's been real nice. And he's like, well, that's because you have big jugs. I mean, your boobs are huge. I mean, I want to squeeze them. And he, she's like fuming. And he's like, mama. And she just punches him right in the face. And he walks out. And he he meets, it, it, it's just an absolute disaster. 
he, he gets caught outside the building by a homeless guy and he's like, any spare change, mister? Absolutely. Could you spare some? Yes, I could. Will you? Mm-mm. How come? Because I want to get from my car to the office without being confronted by the decay of Western society. Plus, I'm cheap. Uh, oh, it's, it's just absolutely hilarious. Um, He goes, he ends up in court. He just can't get his plan out. And he just makes, he just makes noises. And he, he, I honestly don't think this film would have worked with another actor. Uh, Never, ever, ever try and remake this Hollywood. But you just know they're going to. They will at some point remake it. Definitely. They've just, I mean, is it a remake of Home Alone? Or is it kind of a, you know, another, well, it should have been a straight to DVD, but straight to streaming services now, aren't they? And, yeah, by all accounts, that's an absolute shocker. But I'm not going to watch it unless it gets requested. <laughs> but outside of that, I'm not going to watch it freely and willingly. Anywho, he, you work out he can't lie. He can't lie, mislead, or even withhold a true answer or ask a question if he knows the answer's a lie. He tries to get out of the court case, but he can't because all he can say is, you know, I can't lie. And that's not enough for good reason. You see him, in the, and it gets adjourned to one thirty. So you see him go back to his office, and he's sat in a, he stood in a lift, and everyone's like wafting like with disgust faces. And he walks out and turns, and he's like, "It was me." So he's dropped one in the office in the uh, in the lift, and it's it's a it's a parallel to the to the earlier scene. It's the same scene, pretty much, where he walks through his office, but instead of being really smooth and just throwing out these kind of harmless lies trying to make people feel good and that kind of thing it, this one's just a disaster he he walks past a, a quite an overweight guy and he's like what's up fletcher he's like your cholesterol fatty dead man walking and i tell you what i watched this with the subtitles on i can't i'm not sure why i turned them on at some point and it really helps like there's lines in here that i've never heard before that i thought he was saying something else and it, it, it he walks past this poor woman who's obviously besotted with him on reception who's got like these braided well i explained earlier she's got these braided braided kind of sticky out hair anyway and she's like hey mr reed like the new dress whatever takes the focus off your head oh it's just hilarious and this guy's like hey mr reed he's like hey you're not important enough to remember and this this young lad who's got like a big spot on the end of his nose um he says to mr reed um, what's it going to be, Mister Reed, for like lunch? And he's like a pack mark eventually, and he like just he's like for God's sake, don't ask Greta. And he just flies into his office, and you know his smooth ways have completely gone. He's he's like he's losing it. He, he he doesn't know. He's like it's all a matter of willpower, and he tries to lie about the color of a pen, and he can't he can't even write it, and you know the pen is blue, the pen is blue, and there's just a brilliant scene where he like you. It sounds stupid and it is silly, but he, he attacks himself with the pen, draws blue all over his face. Um, and he says to, to Greta, I can't lie. And she, he orderings up and says, oh, are you, are you, are you going to pick up your son? And he's like, I really want to see Max today. And he surprises himself. He's like, how about that? I really do. And he admits why he missed Max's party to Audrey. He's like, she's like, well, I hope it was with someone very special. No, see, that's the thing. I don't even like her, but she's a partner, and I thought it would help my career. But I'm going to squeal, and he throws the phone. And she's like, well, we're moving to Boston. We're going this weekend to look at houses. She's like, you, you'll have the same relationship. He's like, you can't go to Boston. I'll never see Max. And she's like, well, you'll have the same relationship you know, you have with him now. And he's like, right, when you get home, stay there. I'm coming over. We have to talk. So he runs out of the office with his fingers in his ears. Then he speeds there and he gets pulled he gets pulled over by a, a cop. And I'd be surprised anybody, even if you haven't seen this film, who doesn't who doesn't know the next bit. And I'm gonna give it a go. Uh oh, can I rem- can I remember it? Oh I was gonna try and remember it, but I'll use what I've written down. Here goes, I sped, I followed too close to the iron, I stopped sign, I almost did a Chevy, I sped some more, I failed to yield, yield at a crosswalk, I changed lanes to the intersection, I changed lanes without signaling while running a red line and speeding. The cop's like, is that all? No. I haven't paid parking tickets. And he presses his glove box and all these uh, tickets fly out. And he's like, be gentle. And his car gets impounded. Fun bit of trivia. 
the glove box wasn't actually the same car because the model that he's got wasn't big enough to have one. So that scene where he presses it and tickets come out of the glove box, that's a different car. Um, interesting. Yeah or nay? Let me know. Um, so he turns up at Audrey's in a cab and she's like, why did you turn up in a cab? And he trips over the curb as he comes up to it. That that was apparently a mistake. Um, wasn't meant to be in the film. He just tripped. Jim Carrey just tripped over the curb, and they wanted to reshoot it. And Jim Carrey was like, "No, no, it, it works. It shows how he's so he's so used to being very charming and smooth. He he, he can't. He, he's getting clumsier. It's a part of how he's, he's you know he's. I was going to say getting degenerated, but he, how how you know uncomfortable he is in the situation. Even physically, not just the fact he can't, you know, he can't tell a lie. And he says, she helps him get his car out of the impound. And he's like, how do you sleep at night? I'm taking this. <sighs> he steals one of those little magic Christmas tree things, you know, what you get. An air freshener. And they bring his car and he's like, you scratch my car. Where? Right there. Do you know what I'm going to do about this? What? Nothing. Because if I just take it to a small claims court, it'll just drain it eight hours out of my life. And even if I got the judgment, you'd just stiff me anyway. So what I'm going to do is piss and moan like an impotent jerk and then bend over and take it up the tailpipe. Like, you've been here before, haven't you? And throws him his keys. And you find out between them them talking, uh, Audrey is talking to Fletcher, saying, you know, I've got to get back. I've got a class. You work out, they, you find out they've been divorced two years. And she says, look, if I... You know, you don't see Max. If I have to see that look on his face where you you let him down again. And he's like, let me tell you something. I'm a bad father. And he realises he, he is. He's, a, he's great when he's there, but on the whole, he's, he's not fantastic. And she says, you're not a bad father when you turn up. And he says, look, I'll come over after Carton. And she's like, do you know what your son was doing last night? He made a wish that his dad couldn't tell a lie. And she, she says to him, look. Because he says, Boston isn't fair, you can't go on. She says, fair, let's define fair. Last night, a five-year-old boy was crushed because his father lied to him about coming to his birthday party. And the what the bit I liked was the fact that she says, look, what happened last night was none of my business between you and the woman. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. That's the magic of divorce, but it matters to Max. And... It's at this point when she tells him about the wish, he realizes it's come true. So he goes to see Max to try and get him to unwish it, and he gets Max out of class, and he talks to him and says, "Look, everybody lies. I've got to lie. I, I can lose the case. My career. It's a nightmare." And he's trying to explain to a five-year-old why it's important to lie, and Max isn't a daft kid. And he says, you know, he gets a little cake and he says, oh, I've, I've done it. Because Fletcher tries to explain to him, he says, look, you know, when, when your mummy was pregnant with you, she gained a good 40 pounds. There was nothing she wouldn't eat. And daddy was, you know, and mummy was sad. But if she asked me how she, how I looked, how she looked, I'd say, honey, you're beautiful. You're glowing. If I had look, told mummy she looked like a cow with her feelings. And he's, the, <laughs> there's a dead funny bit where the... Max says to him, my teacher says real beauty is on the inside. And he's like, that's just something ugly people say. And then he makes the unwish and he says, I just need a little test. And he goes up to this woman and you don't hear what he says. It's not subtitled either. And she smacks him around the face. <laughs> the kid's like shocked. And it's like, I don't want to lie. Everybody lies. Mommy lies. Even the wonderful Jerry lies. And he's like, you're the only one that makes me feel bad. And then the teacher calls him back in. So he goes back to the office crushed. And he still can't. He still can't lie. And she says, "Oh, uh, one of your clients knocked over another ATM, a cash machine. This time at, at uh, Knife Point, he needs your legal advice." And he just screams down the phone, "Stop breaking the law, asshole!" And then Greta go, goes back into his office, and Greta's like, "Are you all right?" And he's like, "My son hates me. Max doesn't hate you." And he's like. Greta, didn't it seem strange to you that I've been telling the truth all morning? And she's like, well, yeah. But she doesn't believe him. And Miranda comes to talk to him and hears him saying he can't lie through the door. Because he's got one of those dead, those like posh office doors, you know, where it's mostly glass. So there's not much sound kept in them. 
And she's like, all right, okay. He's like, ask me something you think I would normally lie about. She's like, okay. Remember a couple months ago when I wanted to raise and you said the company would not allow it because it would create. Um, and I asked you if you'd pay me out of your own pocket. And you said the company wouldn't allow it because it would create jealousy among the other secretaries. Now, was that true or did you just not want to pony up the dough? And you don't hear what he says, but you see her packing the stuff. And he's like, Greta, please. He tries to get out of court again on the phone to the judge. And he can't. And he says to her, I'll give you the raise. And she says, here's your raise. And she sticks her middle finger up at him. And she says, I remember when you got me this antique silver frame from Tiffany's. Tiffany's. And he's like, garage sale, 650 mark down from 10. And she just drops it and it smashes. And she... She's leaving, carrying a plant and all her stuff. And she's like, please, I'm begging you. I'm on my knees in a $900 suit. And she says, best scene in it, to be honest. Best line coming up. Mr. Reed, several years ago, my friend had a burglar on her roof. A burglar. He fell through the kitchen skylight, landing on a butcher's knife, cutting his leg. He sued my friend. The burglar sued my friend. And because of guys like you, he won. My friend had to pay the burglar $6,000. Is that justice? And he's like, no. And she's taken aback for a minute. For a second, like wow, he's really true, and he goes, "No, I'd have got him 10 And she's like, "Goodbye, Mister Reed." And apparently, that's based on a real life event um, in America. I don't know the, I don't know the details. And Miranda comes up to Fletcher and is like, "Oh, Mister Allen, he's on the partnership committee, like one of the top bosses. You used to work directly for him, didn't didn't you?" And she's thinking, oh, "I'm going to get you stitched up and fired here." And she says, "Oh." Uh, because obviously he's told her she's well I've had better and <laughs> she says what do you think of him and he's like oh, he's a pedanting pontificating pretentious bastard a belligerent old fart a worthless steaming pile of cow dung figuratively speaking because he can't even because he's not technically a piece of anyway I don't need to explain the joke that won't make it any better and she takes him she's like how delightful this way and she takes him into the office where they're having this board meeting really stuffy board meeting and she's like, oh, this is Fletcher Reed. And he's like, oh, I'll be observing you in court this afternoon. And she says, Fletcher's just been telling me how much he thinks of you. And you can see his face thinking, oh, God. And he's like, she's like, well, what do you think of him? And he's like, he says it because he has to tell the truth. But is the emotion behind his voice, he's like, he's a pedantic, modificating, pretentious bastard, a belligerent old fart, a worthless steaming pile of cow dung. Figuratively speaking. And the whole room goes silent and they're all like, oh, God. And then <laughs> and then this Mr. Uh, Mr. Allen just starts laughing his head off. And he's like, I love a good roast. Do Simmons. Simmons is old. He should have been out of the game years ago, but he can't stay home because he hates his wife. You've met her at the Christmas party. She's the one that gets plastered. It's honestly. And he goes around and just absolutely rips the piece out of everyone. He's like, um... You have bad breath caused by gingivitis. You couldn't get a porn star off. Your hairpiece looks like something that was killed crossing the highway. I don't know whether to comb it or to scrape it off with a shovel and bury it in lime. Loser, idiot, whim, degenerate, slut. He like shouts at Miranda. And, oh, it's absolutely hilarious. He's like, that's just what this, uh, well, Mr. Allen says, that's just what this stumpy, stuffy company needs. A little irrever irreverence. He's like, good. I'll see you later, dickhead. And they're all laughing their heads off. He takes the guy's wig, sticks it on the wall. Um, yeah, absolutely brilliant. He walks out and like faints. He's absolutely past himself. And Mr. Allen's like, keep your eye on that boy, dickhead. Oh, hilarious. Then we see them back in court and he's just sat there at the table, just absolutely out of it, past it. And there's this private detective that her husband's got and she's been caught having an affair um, on this tape. And it, I mean, it's not graphic, but you know what's going on by this tape. And I realised through the subtitles, like partway through, the guy's like, I got to go. I still haven't cleaned your pool. And I'm like, oh, God. Like, it's, I found that quite funny. And he doesn't know how he's going to get out of this. Like, the, ca the case has fell to pieces. She's been caught committing adultery, which uh, invalidates the prenuptial agreement. And he's like, Your Honor, would the court be willing to show, uh, grant me a short bathroom break? Um, can it wait? Yes, it can. But I've heard that if you hold it, it can damage the prostate gland, making it very difficult to get an erection or even become aroused. And the judge is like, is that true? It has to be. 
well, in that case, I'm going to take a little break myself. You'll be back shortly so we can finish this. So off he pops. And he's a pain in the, in the urinal. And he's like, how am I going to get out of this? He's banging his head off the wall. And he's like, owie, owie. And then he just proceeds to beat himself up. He puts it up in his eyes, smacks his head in the toilet seat. And apparently there was no sound effects used. The noises you hear are just all Jim Carrey literally beating himself up. And a guy comes in. He's like, what the hell are you doing? It's like, I'm kicking my ass. Do you mind? And the guy like goes back out uh, and he knocks himself out against the wall. And then when he, when he gets taken back into the courtroom by like the bit, uh, like the judge police person, he says, who did this? And he describes himself. He's like a man, man, you honor a useless fool at the end of his pitiful rope. Um, what did he look like? About six, 10, 180 pounds, big teeth, kind of gangly. And he's like, bailiff, have the deputies search the building. And then they're about to, like, um, what do they call it, adjourn the court to, like, the next day because he's been beaten up. And he's like, unless you feel you can still proceed, Mr. Eden. And he's like, yes, I can. So he's beating himself up for no reason whatsoever. Um, he's, And then they call Kenneth Falk, the man from the tape, um, to the stand. And, oh, Fletcher just goes off on her. And the, goes off on him, sorry. Um, and this is one of the, I mean, the lines, like, because he throws them out that quick that you miss some of them. And he's like, and he's trying to, he's trying to say, is it true to say that the relationship between yourself and Mrs. Uh, what's her face? What's her name? It's gone. Between you and her was uh, totally professional. I, 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 uh, I object, and he objects to himself. And he says, and he's like, you had sex with her every time you met, didn't you? Didn't you? Liar! And the the lawyers, uh, the other lawyer, played by Sweetie Coots, Kurt, something like that. She, she was in Michael Molly. She's a great actress. And she says, your honour, he's badgering the witness. <laughs> the judge is like, it's his witness. And he's like, and he's like, you, you, and he's like, you slammed her, you dunked her donut, you gave her dog a snossage, you stuffed her like a Thanksgiving turkey. <laughs> And he makes this like, no, I can't do it. He makes this noise. And <laughs> the guy's like, okay, okay, it's true. Uh, okay, I humped her brains out there. Now you're happy? And like, Mr. Reed's face drops and he's like, it quite emotional. Looks like he's going to cry. He's like, no further questions. And then it looks, and it looks like it's all over. And it, it's adjourned. And he, he's a, he's about, like, they've lost the case and the judge is about to rule in favour of, of the other side, her husband. Our ex-husband and she says like i won't be i won't be a 34 year old on welfare because my scumbag attorney had a sudden attack of conscience so he he's like 30 or 31 or whatever she says and he's like what and he, he looks at the and they're about the guy's like I, I award this too and he's like hang on i call samantha court at the stand and he works out she was only 17 when she got married and signed the, the prenuptial agreement rendering it void and awarding her half of the marital assets and he's like, there's a brilliant scene where he's like, wait, 105, yeah, in your bra. She's like, fine, fine, I'm 127. And he's like, a blonde? Are you a blonde? Um, if you don't remember, perhaps Mr. Falk will. Uh, maybe we can t play the tape again. Maybe it's on there. And she's like, Anna Burnett. And he, uh, brunette. Burnett? What the hell's a Burnett? I'm a brunette. And she's like, why did you Why did you change it? I changed it so I could get married. And Fletcher's like, and the truth shall set you free. Um, and he's like, my client lied about her age. She was only 17 when she got married, which makes her a minor. And in the great state of California, no minor can get married, uh, not married, can enter into a, a contract without parental consent, including prenuptial agreements. This contract is void. Oh, it's, it's hilarious. And then it, the, it, the one... Um, and then the joint custody, the, the, they're talking about custody for the children and the judge says, oh, we've agreed joint custody. And her, his lawyer says, yes, Fletch says, yes. And she says, no. And he's like, what are you doing? She's like, I'm contesting custody uh, with, 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 if I take sole custody with child payments or something like that, it's an extra 12 grand in support payments or something like that. And he's like, you've just won $11 million. And she's like, well, I'm going to hit him when it hurts. And she, he says, but you said he was a good father. She's like, so? And Fletch is like, he has to follow his client's wishes. So he says, you know, we don't have an agreement. And then the judge says, right, there'll be a court hearing on the 18th, whatever. 
And then the court's adjourned and he says, Your Honour, this is just wrong, isn't it? You know, you just because you judged it's right doesn't mean it is. It, it's a technicality. And he's like, young man being mocked in my own court. So anyway, he get, long story short, he gets found in contempt of court. He's like, I hold you in contempt. Like, I hold myself in contempt. What makes you any different? And he gets dragged, like dragged away and arrested. And Audrey won't bail him out. But Greta comes to get him out. So he races to the hospital. And he, he goes past the homeless guy earlier and he gives him all this money. He's like, because he's like, I love my son. He's like, he gives him all this money. And he's like, here, but it's not going to make you happy. And we see um, Audrey and Max at the airport and they meet with Jerry. And Jerry's like, goes in his pocket. He's like, oh, I have something for you, young man. It's it's the claw. And he's got like a little hook on his like index finger, pointing finger. And he's like, ooh, the claw's coming at you. Ooh, you're scared of the claw. You're scared of the claw. Now, apparently, uh, Carrie uh, Elwes, you, um, he still gets people in the street who ask him to do Jerry's version of the claw. Jad thinks brilliant. And I'm sorry, I know you played Professor Lawrence Gordon in the Saw films. Um, and I do enjoy that role. And, you know, you were in... What's the other one? He was in Princess Bride. Was he in Princess Bride, I think? Um, I, th- I think if I ever saw him in real life, I, I would probably ask him to do that. <laughs> I've got to be honest. <laughs> You've got him, haven't you? Um, anyway, so Fletcher gets to the airport and he's like, what gates are leaving from? And a guy tells him, but he's like, look, you're not going to get there. It takes half an hour to get to security. And you, and I never noticed a few times I'd watched it. You see him behind the guy, like holding onto a bag. So he goes through all the back. You don't see this bit, but he ends up on a, like a, one of those little luggage trolley things, little cars. And he, the bag he's on falls off and then he, he unzips himself out of it, which is all real. They, I've seen the behind the scenes. It's literally Jim Carrey in a bag. And he steals a flight of stairs and the guy's like, hey, and he's like, thanks, it's running great. And he chases this 747 down. And it's a hilarious set piece as he, as he comes up, he he puts it, the drive in, and then he climbs the stairs and he pushes the lever so that it extends the stairs. So there's this hilarious bit where there's all these people just sat getting ready for takeoff and Jim Car- uh, Fletcher, well, Jim Carrey's face just appears like screaming for his son next to the, next to the window. Oh, brilliant. And he finally, luckily, he's on the right side of the plane. Uh, it'd be a bit boring if you never found him, wouldn't it? And he and Audrey's dead nervous, and she downs a drink of, of I don't know, some kind of alcohol. And Jerry's like, "Oh my, what what's wrong? Whatever it is, we can work on it." And she's like, and he goes, "Oh my god, it's Fletcher." And she's like, "No, no." And he's like, "No, it's it's Fletcher." And he points, and Max is like, "Dad," and he's like, "But they can't hear him, obviously." And he's saying, "I won't let you go, Max." And he goes and he goes back down and he goes to the, um, the front of the plane as it's well. It's, they, they say they're ready for takeoff, but it's just it's taxiing around an airport. And he, he gets in front of the plane and he throws a shoe at the windscreen. And the the pilot's like, "What the hell was that?" And he's like, it "Looked like a shoe." And he's like, "Pull over, pull this thing over." And they stop the plane, but then Fletcher hits these kind of I, I don't know. If they're at the end, at the end of runways, I've I've seen them. I think they're for like when you star a plane and you don't want high winds. To, anyway, it hits this barrier, and he flies off it, lands on like a luggage carriage train thing. No, pull out those little cars, and he passes out. And it turns out that the he's got broken legs, and Audrey goes to see him like Fletcher, if you're you out of your mind, he's like, no, I'm thinking clear, um, and then. She says to Max, I'll stay with Jerry. And then Jerry says, oh, he's getting upset. And he, say, he says, you know, I love you, Max. You're the most important thing in the world. I've been really stupid. You, I could see you every day, but I can't. And when Mum said you uh, said you were moving to Boston, I started thinking. And Max says, you know, Mum, do we do we have to move to Boston? And the mum looks, Audrey looks at Jerry, and Jerry's like, no, Max, you don't have to go. And... But he says to Audrey, I, on the other hand, do have to go. I've got a hospital at run. That's an open-ended ticket if you ever change your mind. And it goes to, and he says, oh, it looks like he's got his dad back. And Fletcher's hugging his hugging his kid. And then the ending scene. Apparently, the idea came with Jim Carrey. And he, he rang, uh, what's the guy's name? Tom Shadak, the director of this film, in, in the middle of the night to tell him. And it's one year on, Max having his birthday party again. It's just Audrey and Fletcher there. And... Max makes a wish and the lights go out because he's blown the candles out. And you see, he goes, Mom, Dad, and he turns the light on. And Audrey and Fletcher are having a kiss and he says, 
And Fletch is like, Max, did you wish for your mom and I to get together again? And he's like, no, I asked for old blades. And then Audrey says to him, would you like to cut the cake, Dad? And he's like, I'd love to, but I have this terrible pain in my arm. And Max is like, they're both like, oh, my God, it's the claw. And then he chases them around the house. Um, Nothing can stop the claw. And he chases after them. You hear him laughing. And you see like their shadows from outside the house uh, through the curtains. And it ends. And then because it's a Sean, uh, Sean, a Tom uh, Shadak film, his trademark is to have outtakes. So when he did The Nutty Professor, um, in other films he's done, they always have um, outtakes. And the outtakes are absolutely brilliant. Uh, we see the scene where, uh, where Fletcher goes into the goes into the lift with the with the the really good looking lady and as the lift does shut he just throws his back and like and like uh, grabs all of her like jokingly grabs her um as if he like he can't hold himself back and then another scene you see he's in the the he's in the, the lift with her and he's like if i was a boxer i would bounce those things like sugar ray leonard and then he's like i'm sorry and he start they all start laughing and then there's a brilliant brilliant bit where he he stood and he's got a piece of paper and he go he's in court and he goes, Mrs. Cole, and it's like shh and he crumples his paper and he goes, A goose and he throws it does look like a goose as well. And he like throws it and the people who are playing the court attendants, they just all laugh like hell. And then we see a couple more scenes and then the, the best one that ends it, which is where um the actress who plays the the prosecutor for for the for her ex-husband they're arguing and he's like wait 105 yeah in your bra and she's like you're all right object he's like you would and she instead of saying a line which i think is like i don't know what she's supposed to say to him, she just goes over actor and you just see jim catty just laughs his head off and he's like oh no they're on to me uh and that that ends the film what what a fantastic film i'll be honest with you right and you might have noticed i there's some films that I will review. I mean, this is a cracker. And I, if you haven't seen it, well, where, where the hell have you been? But if you haven't seen it, watch it. It's absolutely fantastic. It's hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. And I did this. I did this podcast just so I could do some, just, I mean, I don't do impressions or anything like that, but, but uh, I did this review just so I could watch the film, enjoy it. And then talk, talk you guys through it. I've really, really enjoyed this one. Um, it's kind of the reason why I want to review CP Hollow. You know the version with Johnny Depp? Because the, the names, I want to do that review for the names alone. There's the Van Garretts, the Van Tassels, um, Widow Winship, Notary Hardenbrook. Uh, what's the, uh, there's, there's loads of them. Ichabod Crane. They're just the names, the names alone make those fil- that film worth watching. And it is a cracking film. Anyway, um, Liar Liar. Yeah, Jim Carrey's best comedic film, hands down. Hands down. I know some people love Pet Ventura. I was never... They're good, but I was never a massive fan of them. Uh, the Mask, yeah, The Mask is unbelievable. But I just edge Liar Liar. I think uh, Liar Liar, for me, I'm, is my favourite. Dumb and Dumber, yeah, brilliant. Um, they didn't make a second one, did they? <laughs> um, it was all right. But, you know, sometimes things need to be left. What was a few others he's done, comedic wise? Bruce Almighty, yeah, decent, decent, but not, not you know, not fantastic. Um, I think, and then obviously there's some other roles that he's done that you know, um, what was that film? Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, which I I couldn't get through. I might have to give that. I was quite young when I tried to watch that. To be fair, but I was, so I, I might give that one the go. The Truman Show, unbelievable film. But not comedic. Um, he, he has done some. He's done some good. Fil- he's done some good films. Uh, yeah. So that that is my review. You can find. You can find. You can find me on. Uh, you can find this review. Not this review. Jesus. This podcast on uh, Good Pods, Instagram, Twitter. What's the other one? Uh, oh yeah. Um, Podchaser.com. And you can leave reviews there. Or if you can leave a review or some feedback on any of the listening platforms you're listening on, I'd really, really appreciate it. I would love some feedback. I'm getting a bit of feedback from, from other podcasters, which, which is absolutely fantastic. And thank you very much to all those podcasters who have um, 
retweeted me and, and that kind of thing. Um, if you haven't heard it, I have to do a shout out to Ryan Walker from the Walk the Line podcast. If you haven't listened to that guy's podcast, go over and have a listen to it. It's available on all the major platforms. It's absolutely fantastic. I mean, it puts man into perspective. He does some really good conversations over there with, you know, people who've started their own businesses, people who like to promote uh, well-being, self-help, all that kind of thing. Brilliant. Go give those a listen. Really funny guy. He did, um, he was kind enough to come on and do a, a collaboration with me. Um, we did Die Hard. So if you'd like to go and give that a listen, you can do. Please check out his channel as well. I apologize to him <laughs> and the fans of his podcast uh, because I don't think I let him get a word in edgeways. Poor bugger. Um, for, for a lot of it, you get very used to talking on your own. And you might have noticed I'm not short for, of a word or two. And I probably should have let him talk a little bit more. But don't let that put you off. God, I can really sell a podcast, can I? Um, <laughs> just, yeah. I, to be fair, I had someone once say, oh, you'd make a good salesman. You're very good with people. I said, no, nah, I wouldn't. Because if I didn't believe in something, I couldn't. I couldn't stand there and say to somebody, oh, it's amazing. Even if my job, you know, money depended on it, I, I couldn't. So I've got to be honest about this. I do personally think I don't let him talk enough. But I, it is, we, I had a really good laugh doing it. Um, I just think a little bit of nerves. My first collaboration, I just gobbed on a bit too much. But we did it. We did have a really good laugh. Went off on some asides about the Mummy films and um, my favourite part about talking about um, the way that Ellis, the character in Die Hard, tries to chat a woman up and how highbrow it is. Whereas me and Ryan were like, yeah, can you imagine trying that? Um, it, it would be strange. But uh, yeah, go give that a listen. Um, and as ever, Thank you for listening to this and I will catch you with another review soon. Cheers guys. Um.